thank you for this seminar class tonight. We ask your blessings on every student here tonight. And we ask you, Lord, that you will help us to be saved into your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's take 60 seconds to say hello to someone that's not too close to you. Somebody different. Introduce yourself to somebody. Uh, touch somebody. Uh, somebody's not too close to you. We want to get to know each other out here the best we can. Introduce yourself to somebody. All right. And uh, try not to sit alone. We don't want, want you to sit alone. We don't have to. We want everybody to sit with somebody or close to somebody. Don't sit alone. If you see somebody sitting alone, go sit next to them. All right? We don't want the devil to steal the seat and try to set aside. <laughs> So, so get with somebody, sit, sit with somebody, you're sitting alone, sit with somebody, couple up, we can do that, look a little bit better today, uh, look a little bit better, those in the back, you can feel free to come up if you can, if you can't hear it as well, come up, and uh, does the mic sound okay here? All right, all right, y'all let me know first thing if something goes wrong with the mic. Uh, we are glad to be here tonight, who's here for the first time tonight, let me see you. Here for the first time. All right, we'll stand on up here for the first time. Stand on up. Those here for the first time, we need somebody to hold it out. Right? And for the first time, we have at least five CDs from last night. CDs, they're not DVDs, I'm sorry, but CDs that we give. And uh, we want to give you, we got uh, five, six of you guys. Oh, wow, we got six. Praise God. Amen. All right. The Lord wants to know you say you're coming. Amen. Beautiful. I knew he knew that. And welcome to the seminar tonight. And uh, also, we want you to know that if you want to, uh, you can be seated. Yeah, make sure they get those seated. That's a beautiful subject from last night. And uh, for your information, it's great to word. Of course, we want everybody to, to come. Uh, and keep on coming so they graduate from this class. But spread the word uh, that if anybody has missed a night or two, uh, these seminar sessions are on the internet as well. Just hit Longview Heights SDA Church. And uh, right at the bottom is your regular seminar. Scroll on down for any subjects you might have missed. Uh, and uh, that way you may be able to get something if an emergency comes up. Don't lean on that. Because there's nothing like getting it in living color, right, amen? But uh, we want to appreciate those that's making this come to pass. Uh, Michelle and the balcony, appreciate it, Michelle. And Claude John for doing this. We really appreciate that. We appreciate Brother Stewart and communications folks, Brother Brian and all of them. Uh, Brother Terry for helping out with the CD. Uh, helping us make sure we get the word out. Uh, let's. Uh, give five gifts tonight. Five gifts. Uh, we're getting ready to call the roll. Five gifts tonight. Charlotte Levy. Uh, Levy, stand up. That's you. Amen. We got a gift for you. Uh, Robert Christian. Robert Christian. All right. That's a problem. All right. Shalanda Scott. Shalanda Scott. Where are you? Okay. All right. There she is. Betty Doyle. Betty Doyle. Carolyn Thomas, Carolyn Thomas, where are you? Stand on up. Oh, there she is back there. All right. Okay. Amen. Appreciate that. Congratulations. Uh, to the one who brought the most visitors tonight, we were going to give this beautiful uh, exhaustive concordance of the Bible. Uh, who brought the most visitors? Stand up with your visitors. Stand up with your visitors.
get an answer. All right. The first question is, Pastor, is it a sin to curse and tell white lies? <laughs>
have come here tonight to hear your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Want you to turn in your Bibles to Revelation, and we're talking about the glorious rapture, the glorious return of Jesus Christ. Uh, the other lesson you have will be for Sunday night on the issue that divides the world. Tonight we are looking at the glorious return of Jesus Christ. Revelation 22 and verse 13. Good to see everyone here tonight. Good crowd tonight. Revelation 22, verse 13. How many of you have been praying for this seminar? Amen. Praying for this seminar. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Amen. This is the sixth night of the seminar. And uh, we have 12 more nights to go. Sunday night, Tuesday night, and Thursday night. Tonight is the only night that we do it on Wednesday. Uh, thank God for you that you adjusted your schedule accordingly. Revelation 22, verse 13. What does it say? Read it loud to the class. All right. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the what everybody is. In other words, Jesus is saying, I started it and I'm going to finish it. Am I right? I started it and I'm going to finish it. The bailout emergency is not going to finish it. The economy is not going to finish it. Jesus says, I started it, and I'm going to finish it. Isn't that beautiful, friends? That you don't have to have a heart attack when you hear and watch the news and have a heart attack that something is just going to just mess up. Friend, Jesus said, I'm the one that's going to end things. These things that you see, however, are signs that this world is coming to an end. And let me tell you, Jesus doesn't end it, friends. Man is going to destroy himself. You can see that again. Greedy little selfish man is going to destroy himself. But Jesus said before that happens, I'm going to destroy them that destroy the earth. Amen. Now tonight we talk about the coming of Jesus. It's very important that you know this subject. If you study the lesson, how many times is the coming of Christ mentioned in the Bible? 500 or 2,500 times. How many of you say 2,500? Let me see him. All right. Give yourselves an end clap. Amen. In the lesson, in the lesson, we also found out that the Jews got mixed up on the first coming and ended up crucifying Jesus. They thought that Christ would have come as a king. And he came as a humble man. They got mixed up with the prophecies because they didn't study God's word and ended up crucifying Jesus Christ, made one of the worst mistakes of their lives. Now today, the devil is tricking folk concerning his second coming. His what, everybody? His second coming. Not too long ago, one lady was killed because she thought the secret rapture had begun. And you know how she was killed? She was driving along with her husband, and all of a sudden she saw these bodies floating up in the air. And she thought that the secret rapture had arrived, and that Jesus had come to get his people. And she was so excited, she climbed out of her car, went up through the sunroof, and jumped through the sunroof, thinking she was going to get caught up, and she fell down to her death. It pays to know the truth concerning the secret rapture. And you know what those bodies were floating up? They were Playboy balloons that got loose from the truck and were just floating up in the air. But because the woman didn't know the Bible, she died unnecessarily. Are you with me, friend? We need to know what's going on in God's Word. One TV preacher said, Christ is going to come in front of millions probably on TV. Christ is going to come and convert the whole world. What's wrong with that picture? Christ has never been able to convert the whole world. From what he tells me, somebody's going to hell. Somebody's going to be running. Am I right, Sister Sam? Somebody's going to be running. Somebody's going to be saved. And somebody's going to be lost. So when Christ comes, don't you think he's coming to convert the whole world? He's coming to get folk who already have been converted. Are you with me, friends? Now look at Revelation 8 and verse 1. I want you to catch something with me. Revelation 8 and verse 1. Look at that with me. And it says something. 
nothing about heaven. I want you to, as soon as you get it, just yell it out. What does it say about heaven? That heaven shall be suffering. There shall be silence in heaven. For by the space of a what? Silence in heaven for the space of a half an hour. Friends of mine, if you study the lesson, you will know that uh, when they deducted, the Bible students deducted what a half an hour means in Bible prophecy, they came to about seven days. And so why do you think there's silence in heaven? If you study, you'll find out Christ and the angels have come down here to give his people. They all want to get in here on the action. Are you with me? No angel wants to be left up here in heaven. When Christ said it's time to get my children, all the angels want to come, and heaven is empty for a space of a half an hour, about seven days. Now, why do you think God's going to take his time coming down here? That means he's going to come down here, it's going to take about three days to get here, and then three days to transport us back up to glory. Now, why do you think it's going to take him that long? Christ is a king, right? And a king always takes his time. Is that all right? <laughs> he has never been in a rush. You can't hurry God. But God is never late. He always comes right on time. Are you a good friend? But when he comes, he's going to come in a nick of time. He's going to come and then he's going to take us home. And we're not going to be in too much of a rush because as we are being caught up going home to see Jesus, we're going to see so many things in between. It's almost like the Lord's going to be our tour guide and showing us all the beautiful things in space that he created. Amen? He said, yes, I do. Yes, this is, this is, this is, and we're just going on up. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is wow, Lord, wow, this is, and then by the time you had hit heaven, your mind is going to already be one. It paid to serve Christ. Amen? It paid to serve Christ. And I hope we are serving Jesus today. Now, friends, let us continue on. Who will see Jesus when he comes? Look at Revelation 1 and verse 7. Very important that you know that little verse. We're going to go over a review over it on the screen, but now I just wanted you to, to, to work out those Bibles for a little while. Is that all right? Who will see Jesus when he comes? Now, once you get it, I want you to yell it out.
Secret rapture is not even in the Bible. It's not even in the Bible. Rapture, the term is not in the Bible, but since rapture means to be caught up or snatched away, that's biblical because we will be caught up to meet him in the air. But it will not be secret. And you know what Girl spoke of? Uh, first Thessalonians. That's why I tell you, don't just take one verse and run with it. Especially when you got 50 other verses that say something different. If I have 50 other verses saying something different, I'm not going to let one verse throw me off. There's an explanation for that one verse because the Bible doesn't contradict itself. The term in your Bible is the first Thessalonians, the fifth chapter in verse 2, found on page 1735 of the Seminar Bible. First Thessalonians 5 and verse 2, found on page 1735 of the Seminar Bible. That we've given you as they are King James Version. First Thessalonians 5 and verse 2. Alright, we're going to try to make this good tonight. It's my birthday, I might as well preach like I have some new energy, eh? First Thessalonians 5, verse 2. What does it say? For yourselves know what? Know perfectly come to pass.
uh, where the Bible says he returned with clouds, and we know clouds and prophecy will represent who? This God. Angels. If you study it, you know. It says thousands of angels. Heaven will be empty. Who will see Jesus when he comes? All right. Every eye will see Christ when he comes. Get along.
repentance is a gift from God. You can say no to God so much where you can't even repent anymore, and God can't forgive you and you can't repent. So what's the use? He lets you up in heaven and you're not converted, you'll end up turning heaven into hell. Are you with me, friend? I mean, folk can't even enjoy church for a little while. Uh, you know, they get bored and tired of church, but then heaven, throughout all eternity, heaven? Friends, it'd be hell if folk were not converted. They want to curse every now and then. God said, I'm not going to let you curse on my hand. Just because he accidentally stepped on those toes. They might want to smoke every now and then. God said, I'm not going to let you put no nicotine on my streets of gold. To stay in my streets of gold. They might want to drink every now and then. God said, there's not going to be no beer cans up here. <laughs> and if they're on the other side, a little gay here and there, remember we're not condemning anybody. God said, they're not going to be looking at my angels up there in heaven. They're going to have to be converted. They're going to have to be converted. They're going to have to be delivered. Amen. They're going to have to humble themselves and stop talking about, well, God made me this way. No, God didn't make you that way. God didn't make Adam and Eve that way. You didn't get that from your Adam and Eve. It may have passed down through some genes and through, you know, your fathers and that, but don't blame that on God. Amen. You can blame it on TV too, man. I turned TV the other day. Guess what I saw? Men ripping off each other's clothes, kissing on men. Women kissing on each other. I had to hurry up and clean the channel. I said, you know what It's in my mind now. Please get it out. But young folks looking at that is programming them. So when they grow up, they don't know. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. Friends, a man can never please me. Do I hear, do I hear some amen? Shoot, what all the women have? And man? And I don't see how women can please each other. That's a different subject. Come on out. But this is 